Good evening and thank you for joining us for Kremlin News 10 at 10, where we give you more news in less time. Let's get started. First up tonight, continuing our coverage of the Snyder Road fire tonight burning near Cheney. The good news, all evacuations have been downgraded to level one. That means be ready. That area outlined on your screen right there was under a level three evacuation for several hours this afternoon. That fire burning about 520 acres. However, progression has been fully stopped, according to officials. Just this afternoon, the town of Tyler was forced to evacuate. We had crews at the scene as those cars lined up to leave. We spoke to one man who was woken up with the news and headed straight out the door. And I woke up to my phone screaming at me. I uh, come outside um, to come check on what's going on. And the police pulled up instantly, said I need to get out of here for an evacuation. My mother called me, said, hey, is everything going all right? My mother's on the way to come check on you. I'm like, oh, I just got evacuated. Now I guess I'll head up towards your guys' place because I don't know what else to do. Also today, several smaller brush fires led to major smoke near downtown Ritzville. The smoke was so bad it prompted crews to close I-90 west of town for about a half an hour today. No evacuations were put into place for that fire, but crews asked people to avoid the areas where the fires were burning so crews could do their work. Well, the fires, of course, were made worse by the windy conditions tonight, but red flag warnings just expired for our area. Let's get straight to Chief Meteorologist Jeremy Magoo for more on that and our forecast. Jeremy? Well, Mark, it was one of those ones where I was just going through some of those current wind speeds, and it even looks like our gusts have calmed down quite a bit. There's that Snyder Road fire just to the southwest of Spokane. We zoom in, take a look at the wind, and... It's gusting to six, pretty steady at two miles per hour here in Spokane, gusting to 13. That's enough to ruffle some leaves, and that is about it. A major improvement from where we sat just a few hours ago, but what we do have is degradation to our air quality here in Spokane. A little bit better than where it was a few hours ago yet again. I do think we see more improvement throughout the evening. 54 in terms of AQI, so all in all, it is looking better. Wind continues to die down tonight. Peak wind gusts look to be in the teens in the next couple of hours, but eventually it becomes negligible. That's a bit of good news, especially considering how windy and dangerous fire danger was today. Keep in mind, we are headed into another hot, dry stretch. Temperatures go from the mid 80s tomorrow to the low 90s on Wednesday, then back near 100 as we close out the week. All right, sounds good, Jeremy. We'll check back in with you later in the broadcast. Well, dry weather and high heat certainly creating less than ideal conditions when it comes to wildfires. We'll be tracking the major ones across the region all night right here on Krem 2 and first thing tomorrow morning on Up With Krem. So stay tuned for more. In other news this evening, Lori Kinnear made history tonight, becoming the first female president of the Spokane City Council. The council voted unanimously in favor of Kinnear. Former President Brian Beggs served his last meeting a week ago. He is now a judge for the Spokane County Superior Court. Kinnear addressed her appointment at tonight's meeting. I love working with all of you, and we're going to get some stuff done, and we're going to continue to represent our constituents in the best way we can. There is now a vacancy for District 2 representative. Applications for that position will open tomorrow. The deadline to apply is Friday, August 4th. And happening tomorrow, Washington Governor Jay Inslee will be in Spokane to celebrate the opening of the new City Line buses. The all-electric buses started accepting riders this weekend. They run every 15 minutes and are part of a six-mile route that will take riders through the University District. Inslee will also review the progress of transit-oriented development in the Logan neighborhood. And we are learning more about a deadly crash in Kansas that killed three members of a small church right here in Spokane. All three women who died were from the same family. Krem to Shannon Mowdy caught up with a family friend who is now raising money to support the major medical expenses still facing the Lighthouse Church. That crash happened Friday when a van loaded with members of Spokane's Lighthouse Pentecostal Church rolled near the Kansas Colorado border. We have learned, of course, three women from the same family were killed and several others, including children, were hurt. Kansas Highway Patrol says three women were killed when a church van rolled on Highway 40 Friday. A crash report says Darlene Manene was driving and overcorrected after going off the road. The van was carrying a group from Spokane's Lighthouse Church on their way to Tulsa, Oklahoma for a Bible quiz competition. The driver and pastor's wife, Darlene, was killed. Their unborn child also didn't survive. 
Pastor Menene's mother-in-law and sister were also killed. Pastor Matthias is still in a Denver ICU, says family friend and fellow pastor James Parker. Three young men in the hospital along with Pastor Menene that we are praying for and praying for a speedy recovery. They're all doing much better and progressing, but still have a long way to go. So they're still, they're still looking at a, a lengthy recovery process. For at least four individuals. There were 10 kids in the van. Parker says the children who aren't in the hospital are expected to come home Monday. Parker grew up with the Menenes in Legrand. Left their homes and their jobs and their families here in Legrand and moved to Spokane to start a church. Parker says Spokane's lighthouse was a beacon for the city's Marshallese population, as the Menenes were also from the Marshall Islands. Now their own church community is rallying around them, praying for healing. They, they love people. They're a great family, a giving family, and they just, I mean, you can't find better people than them. Parker's fundraiser has now raised more than $63,000. He tells me that money will be used for the ongoing medical expenses, as well as to bring the bodies of those three women home to Spokane and for their funerals. In Spokane, Shannon Mowdy, Crumb 2 News. Now to our night beat with a quick look at the day's top story. Spokane police are asking for help finding a missing vulnerable adult tonight. 65 year old Kelly, who goes by KJ, was last seen leaving Sacred Heart Hospital on foot at around one o'clock this afternoon. Police say he has physical disabilities and is dependent on medication, which he does not have on him. He's described as being six feet tall, about 225 pounds. He has a long beard and hair around the sides of his head. He was last seen wearing a black or dark blue shirt, black jeans and black shoes. If you have any information or have seen KJ, call Crime Check at that number at the bottom of your screen. New tonight, Spokane police arrested a 16-year-old girl in Riverfront Park for multiple counts of fourth-degree assault. According to police, the suspect was fighting another juvenile. When an adult tried to intervene, police said the suspect then assaulted the adult as well. She was seen holding a knife by officers. When she was finally detained, police say she threw the knife then tried to run. She was then arrested and booked into the Spokane County Juvenile Detention Facility.